What's up guys, how you doing? Really, that's great. I'm doing pretty well myself because I'm currently sitting next to this 27 inch iMac that I found locally for just $30. And what makes this iMac a little strange was the way I found it. So I usually have search alerts set up on Craigslist, let go and offer up with uh, you know some search terms and a max price of a hundred bucks. And I'll usually find iMacs for you know dirt cheap that just say parts are not working. I'll get them home and it turns out they just need a hard drive or they just need some new RAM or sometimes they just need a new software reload. And this one did not trigger any search alerts. I found it just by scrolling through Letgo one day when I was bored and I saw what looked like a blurry picture of an iMac and it had $30 next to it. So I opened it up and the reason it did not trigger this search alert was because the title. Now the title of this ad was not iMac, it was an Apple didn't even have the word computer in it. The title of this ad was, it makes a great gift. The title of the ad was, it makes a great gift. So opening it up, I took a look and it said, you know, Apple 2008, um, iMac, you know, something like that. And I looking at the picture, it was very blurry, but I could already tell because it didn't have a silver bezel that the 2008, 20 and 24 inch iMacs had that, it was not a 2008 like the ad said in the description. I could tell that it was at least a late 2009. So um, I can also tell from the picture that it had this Apple USB extended keyboard, which I already disassembled and cleaned because this was actually black when I got it and it smelled like a bowling alley, like someone had been chain smoking over it. And actually this iMac kind of smells like a bowling alley when we boot it up. But um, so I got it home and booted it up and you can see that it will boot. But you can also already see that there is some artifact on the screen. And what this signifies on these models is a failing GPU or a failed GPU, uh, which is the graphics processor, obviously. And it's very prevalent on these 2009, these late 2009 models, all the way up until I believe like 2012. And it was so prevalent in 2011 that Apple actually had a replacement program for it. And also booting up, he said it didn't have a hard drive in it. And you can already tell that it does have a hard drive because it is booting to an Apple logo and it's, it's loading some sort of operating system. So um, what I would like to do is get this thing open, take a look inside, kind of see what we're up against and see if we can get this thing restored. So opening up the iMac is actually very easy. The glass is held on by uh, just magnets. So you could use two suction cups to pull it away from the display gently. After we do that, the display is actually held on by eight T10 screws. So you can take a T10 Torx driver, remove those eight screws. And then what you wanna do is gently pull the display away. And you wanna do it slowly because there are display ribbon cables in here that don't have a whole lot of slack that you could rip right off the logic board. So taking a pair of tweezers, you can go ahead and unplug the vertical sync cable unplug some of these display cables here, which some of them have uh, two little tabs that you could squeeze. A lot of them just pop right out because they're ZIF connectors or zero insertion force connectors. Once you unplug those cables, you can just gently pull the display. The whole iMac will tilt back because this display actually has some weight to it. After setting it aside, we can go ahead and take a look at the inside of this iMac. And you can see, uh, hopefully, that this thing is absolutely disgusting um it it smells even worse once you open it up it does seem like this came from a smoker's home uh there is the, just cake dust everywhere um in the fans here and i mean honestly this is probably what most people's imax looks looks like because it takes effort to get these things open because of their all-in-one design but they really should be open every once in a while and cleaned out or they end up looking like this so take a look at the inside we got our cd drive here Obviously, it does have a hard drive, and I actually took a look at it. It's a one terabyte hard drive, so that's great. Uh, there is an exhaust vent back here to pull air in, and here are the two fans, like I said, that are completely caked with dust, and actually down here is disgusting as well. Um, we have the power supply, and here's the logic board, and here is our GPU, which is failed or failing, and this entire thing is just a heat sink. So what we're gonna do is, well, I'm gonna start by just cleaning it up and then uh, I'm gonna pull this GPU out and see if there's anything we can do to get it going again. So I actually don't have any compressed air or anything right now to get this thing cleaned up, but I 
I do have a... Well, that actually worked really well. I got a lot of it cleaned up and there was, I got there's some thick dust all up in here. It's all out now. Um, so yeah, looks great. Let's start tackling this GPU. So to get this GPU out of this iMac, we have one, two, three screws, and there's also one up here on the heatsink. So you wanna remove those screws. I believe they're a T8 screw. And you wanna be very careful taking this off, off the uh, logic board, because there are components behind this board. It's a double-sided board uh, that you can damage just kind of popping it off. But it's plugged into a connector right on the other side of this board. And when you remove it too, you wanna, which I already have taken it off, there is a temperature sensor on the back of this GPU and it is plugged in behind the logic board. So you can take some uh, tweezers and unplug it there, but you wanna just gently lift it up, kind of wiggle it, and there it goes. So there's the back side of the GPU. The actual chip itself is on the other side of this board and this whole thing is just a heat sink. So it takes all the heat, takes it up to these grills, which the fan blows through and keeps the GPU cool. Uh, one thing about these iMacs is unfortunately with their slim design, uh, they don't allow for a whole lot of cooling. And you know, a lot of people get 27 inch iMacs for video editing and stuff like that, that are very graphic intensive. So these chips get very hot. And that's a big reason why they end up failing is because they're just not being, they're not able to keep cool. So you can pull them out um, and we're gonna try to see if we can revive this one here. With the GPU removed, uh, you can either take it off by unscrewing these two or these four uh, Phillips head screws on the back and they're just spring loaded, they'll stay in. Uh, but either way, it's gonna take uh, these four small torque screws off the back and this bracket just holds it together, uh, squeezes it together against the uh, heat sink with thermal paste in between to help dissipate heat. So I've already gone ahead and removed these screws. We can remove the bracket. And the graphics card itself should actually come out now. So taking out the GPU from the iMac and removing it from the heat sink, we can see here is the main GPU and it has some thermal paste on it, as well as these surrounding chips. So what happens with these iMacs is, like I said, there, is, there isn't a really sufficient airflow going through it and these can heat up, uh, especially because people buy 27 inch iMacs with the idea of, you know, wanting to do video editing and stuff like that, which is very graphics intensive. So this chip gets very hot and without the right amount of cooling um, or the right amount of thermal tolerance that this chip lacks and a lot of them lack from 2009 to 2012, uh, the chip will eventually just fail. So what you can do, and I have to preface this by saying uh, this is by no means a permanent fix what I'm about to do. This is a temporary option at best. You can buy these chips uh, used on eBay, but unfortunately they're just ticking time bombs. They're just gonna fail eventually um, sooner rather than later. So what you can do to revive a GPU, especially uh, these ones in these iMacs, is you can put it in the oven for eight minutes at 395 degrees uh, uh, Fahrenheit. And that's almost, that's, about, that's right around 200 C. A lot of people say that it reflows the solder balls under these chips because the repeated heating and cooling over the years makes the solder balls under the chip um, crack and that'll reflow them, reconnect them so you have a good connection. But on, what I think is the 217 degree melting point of lead-free solder, which is used in here, um, that's just, you know, they're putting it in the oven for 200 C, it's just not enough to melt that solder. So there is underfill in these chips. This is a flip chip design and there is underfill inside the chips. It's like a, it, it goes in between uh, the chips inside and what happens over time is the heating and cooling actually messes up that underfill so that there, there's just bad connections inside the chips. Otherwise, you know, the, the chip is dead is pretty much what I'm saying. So putting it in the oven actually uh, resets that underfill, it melts it a little bit and, and uh, resets it. And this is, like I said, a temporary fix. I've seen that it works, you know, it could work for days, months or years but this is a temporary fix. But other than that, uh, I'm gonna clean this up, take the thermal paste off, I'm gonna remove this uh, rubber here and uh, get to throw it in the oven and let's, we'll see what happens. All right, so just pulled it out of the oven, and you can see I had it, it's all cleaned off of the uh, thermal paste there, so we definitely need to add some more thermal paste, so I got this Arctic 
MX4 thermal compound. And it's a little different than your normal Arctic silver compound in that if you get it on any of the surrounding components, uh, since it doesn't have silver in it, it won't actually short anything out. Um, I've seen really good reviews for this. I've never actually used it. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply it on the actual GPU and these surrounding chips. Now, a lot of people like to put it on there and actually use like a spudger or something to spread it around. Uh, but I like to use what's called the P method. And that is just putting a small P amount on here, just like that. And doing the same on these chips. All right, so I got the heat sink back in. I got the GPU attached there, obviously. It actually took a really long time because I'm using these janky tools that I have that you have to actually push and hold it in because it's spring-loaded and they're folding and stuff. And uh, some tweezers to get the, uh, the temperature sensor plugged back in on the back of the logic board right behind here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reassemble it. Uh, make sure that you plug in all of these cables because some of these are temperature sensors and you'll know you didn't when you turn it on and the fans are running at a million miles an hour. So let's uh, put it back together and see if it fixed it. All right, so moment of truth, we got it all back together. And if you remember when we powered it on before, there was a vertical yellow line signifying that the GPU has failed or failing. So, fingers crossed. Let's see, we got no line so far. And we got an Apple logo, and it's booting. <laughs> Can't believe that worked. So yeah, like all, all we did before was we just baked the GPU card in the oven, cleaned it off, baked it at 395 degrees Fahrenheit for eight minutes, and we don't have any artifact anymore. So, but like I said, I do have to preface that with saying that it is not a permanent fix. This GPU card is still bad or failing, um, but it is good in the meantime. So I'm actually curious to see what we boot up to here. So getting it fully booted up, uh, it is running El Capitan. It did have a password on it, but the password was just nothing, which I love. Thank you, previous owner. Uh, so we're running a uh, 3.06 gigahertz Intel Core 2 Duo processor. Not a great processor, but that 3.06 gigahertz helps, absolutely. Uh, memory, we're running six gigs of 1067 megahertz DDR3. There's our ATI Radeon 4670 that we just baked in the oven and uh, you know the serial number and stuff as well. But everything seems very functional and uh, you know there it doesn't look like there's anything on the hard drive. There is you know somebody's Steam account is here. Doesn't seem to be logged in all the way though. So I will do a wipe on this. Uh, like I said before, this is not a permanent fix, uh, but this is a good way to you know revive a dying GPU and you know get some more life out of it. A, you know, otherwise great machine. Uh, so this machine will be fun to work on and do some projects on for sure. All right, guys, so the GPU bake was a success. We were able to revive this 27 inch iMac. It ended up being a late 2009 that I only got for $30. Uh, so this thing might be a, a pretty fun to do some projects on and do some tinkering with. It was a good way to revive that GPU. Uh, but if you like this video, please let me know by hitting the like button down below. And if you wanna see more videos like this, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I know this has been a little clunky as my inaugural YouTube video here, uh, just using an iPhone SE to record everything and using some janky tools. I do wanna say that uh, iFixit has great step-by-step -step guides. They're not sponsoring this video, of course, but they have great step-by-step -step guides on how to tear down a lot of electronics and do a lot of your own repairs. So you can go to their website. They also have a ProTech toolkit that I will link down below as well. That's a great looking toolkit. I wish I had it, I don't, but I hopefully plan on getting one eventually. <laughs> but um, they have great tools and parts and they also have great step-by-step -step guides. So if you wanna head over to their website, I'll link that stuff down below. But once again, guys, thank you so much for joining me on this little adventure. The bake was a success. See you and hopefully the next video.